and this is the Nonprofit Corner Podcast with your host, Dr. Victoria Boyd. And welcome back to the Nonprofit Corner Podcast. And it is my extreme pleasure to introduce today Linda Lysakowski, A C F R E. I'll let her explain to you what those letters mean because it's really a very, very uh, distinguished designation that she has. But she's a longtime friend. She's one of my co authors of one of the books we wrote. Um, she's also, I want to say, one of the best nonprofit consultants in the industry because she is, uh, all of the books that she has written has been about a plethora of topics in the nonprofit industry, but I just think that she knows her stuff. And welcome, Linda, to the show. How are you? Oh, thank you so much, Victoria. It's so good to reconnect. We, as you said, we've written books together, we've worked together, done training together, and then we kind of lost touch through circumstances in your life and my life, but it's so good to reconnect with you and be back here as your guest again. I think it's been several years, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. You were on my previous show, but I'm just excited to be relaunching a podcast to get back out there and help the nonprofit sector with education, awareness, and resources. And you are one of the phenomenal resources. How many books have you written? Just, I you know. know, I honestly think I've lost track I, <laughs> because I've co-authored with you and with several other people and I've written a lot on my own and I've been a contributing author to a couple of books so if you count all of that it's probably close to 40. Wow. I've them in the nonprofit sector but I've also kind of diversified a little bit. I wrote a novel and I wrote a travel book called uh, Beyond Las Vegas Road Trips from A to Z because i found that living in Las Vegas, Las Vegas area for 20 years now, that a lot of people come out here and think all oh, this is a strip. You know, I, I actually had a friend who came out here and she said, oh, you have grocery stores here. I said, well, yeah, we have 2 million people. Where do you, oh, I just thought you went to the buffet at the casinos every day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so people <laughs> do have some yeah, the concept of Las Vegas is nothing but the strip, but there's a whole wonderful community off the strip. I not, hardly ever go on the strip. I mean, like, I don't need that. <laughs> you know, when I go there, I don't recognize it. I'll to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you get lost. And plus, the, the traffic is just so bad. Yeah, so we just avoid this strip. So that's <laughs> right. why we're here today. First of all, we're both going to be in a giveaway, and I believe it, the name is going to be Effective Leadership Toolkit for Nonprofit Leaders. But title might change. It's not until November, so they still have time. But we both are going to be contributing consultants or uh, nonprofit experts and um, providing a free giveaway. And But before we get into that, that's why we're here today, I want to talk about you know, you have a very interesting journey of how you got into nonprofit sector because you really didn't start out in the nonprofit sector. No, I did not. I've had so many careers over my life and I'm constantly reinventing myself. I'm soon going to be 81 years old, but I'm still learning and I'm still reinventing. Uh, but I got into this sector. I was, well, my first career was raising a family. I had yep five children that I was raising and then I went into banking and I one day looked in my file drawer at work and I said banks are very big on getting their employees involved in the community so I was doing a lot of volunteer work in the community and one of them was I was going to undergraduate school as an adult I was 45 when I got my undergraduate degree and believe it or not, next year, when I'll be 81, I expect to get my graduate degree. Oh, I'm currently I'm in my last semester of um, my graduate studies. But I realized that I had more fo file folders for nonprofit activities than I had for work. And I thought, I believe I'm in the wrong career. <laughs> and one of the things that I was doing was 
volunteering for my university in their annual business appeal. And when I met the development department, I was like, oh my gosh, people actually get paid to raise money. This is like my dream job. So I sent my resume in at the president of the university and about two weeks after graduation, they contacted me and asked if I would be interested in the being the assistant vice president for institutional advancement, which wow. is the fancy <laughs> academic name for being a fundraiser. <laughs> And I said, oh, I would love to. I just sent my resume into the president about a week ago. <laughs> so I realized that this was a career that was for me. But I also realized after a while that I did not enjoy academia. <laughs> if you've been in academia, you'll probably understand it's it's great in, I, in some ways, but in other ways, it was just it's too, very restrictive. bureaucracy for me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And so then I went to work in a museum and I was finding that I was mentoring people, even though I didn't have that many years in the field, I was mentoring people who were starting nonprofits and didn't know how to get things started, how to build a board, how to start doing fundraising. And I said, there's a real need for a consultant to help these kind of organizations because the bigger organizations that were doing multi-million dollar capital campaigns had a lot of consultants to choose from. And I decided I was not going to do capital campaigns. I was just going to help people start creating a development office. Well, before long, I was doing capital campaigns. And I was one of those people doing those multi-million dollar campaigns. And um, then I realized that in order to impart knowledge, and I'm a firm believer in lifelong learning, obviously, if I'm getting a master's degree at the age of 81, but uh, but I realized that if I wanted to really impart knowledge, I had to do something more than consult. So that's when I started writing books. Okay. And I think it was in the, oh gosh, maybe the early 90s when I published my first book. And I... I that one was recruiting and training fundraising volunteers, it's still in publication through Wiley. But then I started realizing that, gosh, you know, writing books is great, but I can actually be teaching people. So now I've, I just realized, I just got accepted to present at a, a conference in Dallas in February. And I thought, well, I can get out and train people. And that was even, a better way to reach a lot of people. And then of course, during COVID and even before COVID, I had started to develop a lot of online courses. And I thought, oh, this is great. You know, I can reach so many more people this way. And so for me, it's leaving a legacy, I think is the yeah. main reason I do what I do now. Absolutely. You know, I'm a born trainer and, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I taught school for uh, 30 some years. And so you right. know, obviously it's in my bloodline that you know, <laughs> I should be helping others reach their, what I say, their full potential, whether it's right. students that I did for the first half of my, or of my career, or now just training in the whole nonprofit sector. That's what I love to do. I like writing blogs. I don't write as much as you, you know, not as many <laughs> books, but I do write a lot of blogs and content and, and, and things like that. So uh, I think we're, we're both sort of parallel and aligned in what our passion is and, and how we nice. want to really help um, the nonprofit sector. We're gonna take a real brief break right now and we'll be back in just one second. And welcome back to the Nonprofit Corner podcast. And it is my extreme pleasure to introduce today Linda Lysakowski, A C F R E. I'll let her explain to you what those letters mean because it's really a very, very uh, distinguished designation that she has, but she's a longtime friend. She's one of my co-authors of one of the books we wrote. Um, she's also, I want to say, one of the best nonprofit consultants in the industry because she is, uh, all of the books that she has written has been about a plethora of topics in the nonprofit industry, but I just think that she knows her stuff. 
And welcome, Linda, to the show. How are you? Oh, thank you so much, Victoria. It's so good to reconnect. We, as you said, we've written books together. We've worked together, done training together. And then we kind of lost touch through circumstances in your life and my life. But it's so good to reconnect with you and be back here as your guest again. I think it's been several years, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. You were on my previous show, but I'm just excited to be relaunching on podcasts, get back out there and help the nonprofit sector with education, awareness, and resources. And you are one of the phenomenal resources. How many books have you written? Just, I you know. know. I honestly think I've lost track I've, <laughs> because I've co authored with you and with several other people, and I've written a lot on my own. And I've been a contributing author to a couple of books. So if you count all of that, it's probably close to 40. Wow. I've got them in the nonprofit sector, but I've also kind of diversified a little bit. I wrote a novel and I wrote a travel book called uh, Beyond Las Vegas, Road Trip from A to Z, because I found that living in Las Vegas, Las Vegas area for 20 years now, that a lot of people come out here and think all oh, this is a strip. You know, I, I actually had a friend who came out here and she said, oh, you have grocery stores here. I said, well, yeah, we have two million people. Where do you? Oh, I just thought you went to the buffet at the casinos every day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so people do have some. Yeah, the concept of Las Vegas is nothing but the strip. But there's a whole wonderful community off the strip. I not hardly ever go on the strip. I mean, like I don't either. Never. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, when I go there, I don't recognize it. I'll to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you get lost. And plus the, the traffic is just so bad. Yeah. So we just avoid this strip. So that's <laughs> right. why we're here today. First of all, we're both going to be in a giveaway. And I believe it, the name is going to be Effective Leadership Toolkit for Nonprofit Leaders. But title might change. It's not until November, so they still have time. But we both are going to be contributing consultants or uh, nonprofit experts and um, providing a free giveaway. And But before we get into that, that's why we're here today. I want to talk about you know, you have a very interesting journey of how you got into nonprofit sector because you really didn't start out in the nonprofit sector. No, I did not. I've had so many careers over my life and I'm constantly reinventing myself. I'm soon going to be 81 years old, but I'm still learning and I'm still reinventing. Uh, but I got into this sector. I was, well, my first career was raising a family. I had yep five children that I was raising and then I went into banking and I one day looked in my file drawer at work and I said banks are very big on getting their employees involved in the community so I was doing a lot of volunteer work in the community and one of them was I was going to undergraduate school as an adult I was 45 when I got my undergraduate degree and believe it or not, next year, when I'll be 81, I expect to get my graduate degree. Oh, I'm currently I'm in my last semester of um, my graduate studies. But I realized that I had more fo file folders for nonprofit activities than I had for work. And I thought, I believe I'm in the wrong career. <laughs> and one of the things that I was doing was volunteering for my university in their annual business appeal and when I met the development department I was like oh my gosh people actually get paid to raise money this is like my dream job so I sent my resume into the president of the university and about two weeks after graduation they contacted me and asked if I would be interested in the being the assistant vice president for institutional advancement which wow. is <laughs> the fancy academic name for being a fundraiser. <laughs> and I said, oh, I would love to. I just sent my resume into the president about a week ago. <laughs> so I realized that this was a career that was for me. But I also realized after a while that I did not enjoy academia. <laughs> if you've been in academia, you'll probably understand. It's it's great in, in some ways, but in other ways, it was just 
It's to very restrictive. Bureaucracy for me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so then I went to work in a museum and I was finding that I was mentoring people, even though I didn't have that many years in the field, I was mentoring people who were starting nonprofits and didn't know how to get things started, how to build a board, how to start doing fundraising. And I said, there's a real need for a consultant to help these kind of organizations because the bigger organizations that were doing multi-million dollar capital campaigns had a lot of consultants to choose from. And I decided I was not going to do capital campaigns. I was just going to help people start creating a development office. Well, before long, I was doing capital campaigns. And I was one of those people doing those multi-million dollar campaigns. And um, then I realized that in order to impart knowledge, and I'm a firm believer in lifelong learning, obviously, if I'm getting a master's degree at the age of 81. But, uh, but I realized that if I wanted to really impart knowledge, I had to do something more than consult. So that's when I started writing books. Okay. And I think it was in the, oh gosh, maybe the early 90s when I published my first book. And I, I that one was recruiting and training fundraising volunteers, it's still in publication through Wiley. But then I started realizing that, gosh, you know, writing books is great. But I can actually be teaching people. So now I've, I just realized I just got accepted to present at a, a conference in Dallas in February, and I thought, well, I can get out and train people, and that was even a better way to reach a lot of people. And then, of course, during COVID and even before COVID, I had started to develop a lot of online courses. And I thought, oh, this is great. You know, I can reach so many more people this way. And so for me, it's leaving a legacy, I think, is the yeah. main reason I do what I do now. Absolutely. You know, I'm a born trainer and, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I taught school for uh, 30 some years. And so you right. know, obviously it's in my bloodline that you <laughs> know, I should be helping others reach their, what I say, their full potential, whether it's right. students that I did for the first half of my, or of my career or now just training in the whole nonprofit sector. That's what I love to do. I like writing blogs. I don't write as much as you, you know, not as many <laughs> books, but I do write a lot of blogs and content and, and, and things like that. So uh, I think we're, we're both sort of parallel and aligned in what our passion is and, and how That's we nice. want to really help um, the nonprofit sector. We're going to take a real brief break right now, and we'll be back in just one second. To find this and other shows, visit TPF Network on YouTube. Subscribe so that you get notice of every show. Okay, we are back with the Nonprofit Corner podcast. And once again, this is our wonderful guest, Linda Lysakowski. So Linda, I mentioned earlier that we were doing this effective leadership giveaway or toolkit where uh, individuals in the nonprofit sector, they can go on this particular website and there's going to be a lot of resources available that they'll be able to download or however the people have set it up, but it's gonna be jam packed with resources. So tell me a little bit about what you're considering, you know, cause we are, some of us haven't even made up our mind yet, but, <laughs> but what is it that you uh, might be offering? Well, I thought about a lot of different things when, when Mary Highland approached me and I was so excited to see you on the list. She's got an amazing number of people. So there's going to be a lot of giveaways. It, no matter what your needs are, you're going to find a giveaway in this program. I, I guarantee it. But I thought since online courses are really kind of my passion, I decided to give a course called the Development Plan. Mm -hmm. Because what that was one of the things that when I started in this field, I thought there were two things that many nonprofits didn't really have and needed, first of all. And so when I, in a couple of places that I've worked, it's been starting a whole development mm -hmm. program from scratch. And I realized that you needed a development plan and a case for support. So I was debating between those two. And I thought the development plan 
seems to be a good basic course for people that maybe have, are new to this profession or even people who have been in it a while. A lot of times you need a refresher course. So, you right. know, just to do an assessment, because that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm providing a website assessment for the oh. Google Ad Grant. So, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, refresh your course, new course, any from any course is great. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> that's my feeling. And, and I have to honestly say that anytime I go to a course on any subject, right now, my pastor is teaching a course on the liturgy. And I thought, well, now I've been a Catholic for 60 some years. I think I should know all this. But I am learning new things all the time. And I said, you know, I that I'm 80 years old, soon to be 81. And I feel like I'm still learning. We so have the capacity for so much. Right. And, you know, just like if you watch an old TV show, you go, oh, I don't remember that part. <laughs> right. It's like a whole brand new show. Wow. Okay. Or you, you read a book and I have books that I've read over and over and over again. But every time I read them, I learn something new. Absolutely. And I thought... So even if you've been in this field for a long time, maybe your organization doesn't have a written plan, or maybe you have one and nobody knows how to implement it. I find that yeah, out this way, maybe they're at a different stage within the right. organization because if you're a brand new organization, that plan might look different than if you've been around for a few years and, and you have some of the systems and things in place already that you really can look at it. You know, a lot of times where you are or were a few years ago is the idea and your plan might be totally different from where you are right mm -hmm. now. So that's why it's great to, even though you think you have one, you need to- <laughs> you might. You might not. And one of the things I tell people is whenever I talk about the development plan, invariably, several people will ask me, well, do you have a sample plan you can share with me? And I said, sure, I have dozens of them, but they're not going to do you any good because where you are is totally different from where someone else is. Yeah. And your plan has to be for your organization. Absolutely. And, and a lot of organizations don't understand that concept that, yeah, there's templates and all this stuff that you can have, but you still have to mold it to who your unique cause, your new unique system and structure mm -hmm. and who you're dealing with because you're all solving a problem, but it's a different problem. Mm -hmm. And one and size does not fit all. And one of the things, just as an example, as I said, you know, even when I'm teaching this live in a room and there's 30, 40 years, 100 people, one person at the table is probably brand new and their organization has never done much fundraising. Absolutely. And the other organization maybe has been doing fundraising for 30 or 40 or 50 years, but it's not working as well as they should. And I said, the person who's new, they're going to be focused on different things like building infrastructure, for example, where the organization that has a big database of donors, for example, higher education, they have tens of thousands of alumni. They know who their donors are, yeah. most part. They don't need to worry about that infrastructure. They need to worry about improving on that, raising, raising more major gifts and not focused on as much of the uh, smaller gifts. So every organization is totally different. And the plan, the template would work probably for anyone. I do give them a template in this course, but what goes into that template is yeah. going to be very different. Your goals are going to be different. Yeah, and, and a template is basically just a spreadsheet that you fill in, you know, right. you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's not a step. You do this first, you do this, you know, right. it, it's, it's giving you the, the shell, but you still have to fill in all of the detail, you know, and just, just like uh, I did what was called super donor uh, framework training uh, about a month ago. And it's a framework of, you mentioned individual donors, where most of the small to mid-sized organizations, that's where their focus is. They're, you know, they don't have those huge, large database. And so their infrastructure needs to be focused on how to attract and retain those individual donors. And right. I, just, I just saw that as a need. And a lot of it is marketing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole marketing plan where you take the, what, 
now is the continuum that most nonprofits look at where they have first time donors sustain it all the way up to legacy. It looks at engagement. Mm -hmm. How are they engagement? And are you building and creating an advocate that will speak for you as a super donor? And so that, that was a fun course. And, and I'll be doing that again uh, at the beginning of November. So I, we, we have to get together and do a course together again. It's been absolutely. So long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm back in town, as I said. You know, um, so we, we'll just figure that out. And, uh, you know, like I said, I uh, just a few days ago, I did the Google Ad Grant training, which was all about what your website needs, because if your website isn't working right for the organization, the Google Grant's not going to work. But all of these demonstrates that all of the consultants or uh, professionals and experts that will be in this giveaway, and it runs November 6th through the 26th of 2023, I have so much to offer in all different types of areas. So it's, it's even though it says for leaders, I think it's for anyone that's in the sector, board members, leaders, staff, mm -hmm. volunteers, you know, if you're thinking about starting a nonprofit, you probably need to look at, at what is in this toolkit because I'm sure there's going to be something valuable that they'll find there. Okay, so anything coming up new and more training for you? I know you're always on the nonprofit courses uh, roster. Uh, well, my, my goal for 2024, as I said, I'm in my last full semester of graduate school. And then next year I, I work on my capstone project, which is probably going to be writing another book. <laughs> if my advisor accepts that, um, I have several ideas in mind, but I decided that 2024 is going to be the year that I really update and upgrade a lot of my courses. I did, when I started all these courses, I did upgrade them all once and, mm -hmm. and, because things change, new yeah. ideas come along, new processes. So I'm going to come up with probably some new ideas. And then I've recently um, talking about training and how it can not only help the people that you're training, but for me, I find that I have met such wonderful people through my training efforts. And recently, this is such a kind of a funny story, but when I first started my business, which was 1993, so that's what, 30 years ago, <laughs> um, 40, 40 years, I don't know, <laughs> 40 years ago, 30, I guess, but I was, um, I was doing a lot of training then, and I had a workshop in Maryland when I was living in Pennsylvania, and this gentleman came to my workshop, and it was a workshop on capital campaigns and he was fairly new to development. Well, we sort of stayed in touch for a little while. And then as you know, things you kind of drift away and all of a sudden I reconnected with him and I didn't realize how much of an impact I had on this man. He now has a multi-million dollar consulting business. And he said, I would love to have you be affiliated with me. So we're we're playing. We had a, a in person conference here in Las Vegas last February, and we had about a hundred and some people in attendance. And he wants to do another one in Las Vegas in January. And um, so I I was kind of fascinated by his model. He really teaches people. It's called a major gift ramp up model, and he's teaching people to go beyond these special events, which are so time consuming. Yes, I know. Oh, and, and, and just the time and, and taxing on the staff. Right. Oh my God. I always tell, no, let's, let's do events last. Let's, let's yeah, definitely. Last. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's so many people that depend on them. So he teaches them a model where they can raise money for major program needs for capital needs for endowment needs and they do it all at one time which is very novel and at first i thought is this guy nuts or what you know <laughs> this isn't going to work this is goes against everything i've been taught but the more i started associating with him 
the more enamored I became of his model. So now I'm doing a lot of writing for him. Okay. I'm writing blogs constantly and I'm I'm engaged to write two books for him and also helping him with these um, workshops because I think so many people have so much to learn mm -hmm. from this model and I, I just became fascinated with it. Well, so yeah. I've now reinvented myself again to actually be sort of working for someone else, which I swore I would never do again. <laughs> Absolutely. But you'll have to keep me in the loop. If that's in Las Vegas, I'll, I'll yeah. want to uh, stay in the loop on when that yes. is. Where we'll, it is. We'll definitely talk Absolutely. about that. And I think so. we are fun. going to wrap it up now. You have been a just a wealth of information, just dropping little nuggets here and there. Um, I'm going to put how to contact you in the uh, description of the website. Thank I mean, you. of the podcast. But... <laughs> Everyone, this is Linda Lysakowski. And when I first introduced you, I said you were going to explain what ACFRE is. Yes, oh, and I never Tell did. It is. <laughs> well, an ACFRE is an advanced certified fundraising executive. There's a, probably, I think there's close to 20,000 certified fundraising executives in the world, but there's about 130 of us that are at the advanced level. And uh, besides being the ACFRE, my new business cards are now going to have, through my affiliation with Jimmy, I'm now a certified nonprofit consultant. And I have more initials after my name. When I get my master's degree, I'm going to add a uh, master's, I actually getting a master's in Franciscan theology. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll have a few more initials to put after my name. And pretty soon I, I won't be able to fit I, I want a car. A car about a foot long because with a name like Lysakowski, that's <laughs> enough. And then um, to having all these credentials. But as I said, I'm a lifelong learner. And I just believe that everybody should strive to first become a CFRE or a certified um executive uh, the, as one of the designations that um, made your gift ramp up yeah. through NANO, the National Association of Nonprofit Organizations and Executives. Yes. They <clears throat> offer all these designations. And I mean, you might think it's just a bunch of letters after your name, but it it does if you're show people that you're committed. The realm of fundraising. I'm mm -hmm. not necessarily in the realm of fundraising. I'm more marketing and, and right. over over on that side of it, which you need marketing in order to do fundraising. Absolutely. So, and, <laughs> and I think that's the gap that I saw that they were trying to do all these fundraising, but they never really put together the marketing to right. go with it. So I, I, I gravitated over there because it was fun, you know, and, yeah. and so I... What I do supports all of the fundraisers' efforts. So anyone out there, if you're a fundraiser, you need to go and look for these certifications. You know, especially if Linda is teaching one of those courses, I'm sure the CEUs are available because she yes, is. Yes, they are. <laughs> all my courses are approved for CFRE credits. So. Okay. See. <clears throat> wealth of information. I told you that. Okay, <laughs> Linda, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for taking uh, time out of uh, obviously a very busy schedule, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you real soon. We got to stay in touch. Got to yes, meet, sure. meet you at Mimi's for lunch again. Uh, there you go. That sounds good to me. Okay, so once again, this has been the Nonprofit Corner Podcast, and this is your host, Dr. Victoria Boyd, and we will see you next time.